<laughs> hey everybody, it's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics, back for video number five. Um, I'm on a sugar high because I have a big bag of gummy bears. And I actually started mixing my colors and thought, oh crap, I'm supposed to be filming this. So apologies, I'll get you guys caught up fairly quick. If you hear laughter, it's because my husband and daughter are watching some crazy movie downstairs in our family room. Um, first things first, I always like to show the finished product of the previous um, video and I want to talk a little bit about it because it's going to factor into what I'm doing tonight. So this is, I don't know if I can put it up here without knocking everything over. This is Heartland. It's almost cured. Um, I am blessed in that for whatever reason my house loves um, my house loves my house is really good um, in terms of letting paint dry uh, I have good air it must be the right combination of heat and humidity but I really have rarely have problems with uh, crazy um, or things of that nature so I'm blessed the reason why I want to show you also is when I did this one you see it's very busy on the ends and much calmer in the middle and I was having a conversation with a girlfriend who told me, you know, what if it's because I'm so methodical that when I mix my paints, I tend to go in order and put them each in a cup as I go down the line. And her theory is that the two cups that were in the middle that I probably grabbed, grabbed at random had less silicone in them. I'm like, huh, that's an interesting theory. So tonight, I'm going to ensure that the cups are all fairly mixed up. They all have exactly three drops of treadmill silicone in them. And we will see if we get cells everywhere or will there be spots where the canvas just has a pretty cool background. Um, with that said, let me get off camera as fast as possible and onto the canvas. Let's tilt this down a little. Stay, stay. Good boy, okay. Um, so what I started to do is I mixed all my paints. I'll tell you about the colors in a minute. Um, and they're all quite runny, very thin again, um, just like last time. So if I show you here and mix it up and pour it off my stick, there is virtually no trace when the uh, paint hits the paint in the cup. It, it dissipates immediately. So very thin. Um, and the last couple videos I did, um, the pores were what I consider somewhat organized in that I did my, you know, lifted my canvas up, tilted and dragged, not really dragging the cup. I don't want to confuse people. I'm not dragging the cup on the canvas. I am. We'll get that one later. I'm taking the cup and when I lift, when I say I'm dragging, I'm dragging the paint out of the cup, but the cup isn't touching the canvas. Just wanted to clarify that point. Um, anyway, I lost my, my uh, thought. Um, tonight, organized in the same consistency in the same amount of silicone, um, but I'm not going to line them up and pour it down. Tonight I'm going to do random and I made the paint thin on purpose because I'm going to tilt a lot and move it all around. <coughs> Excuse me. And hopefully get a nice composition without having the straight lines or anything like that. Um, I already added my white to, um, four cups. Um, I'm not going to fill these up all the way. My canvas. I believe it's a 12 by 18. It's on cradled wood. It's already pre-gessoed. I love these. Get these from Dick Blix. Um, what else did I wanna tell you? I feel like I'm talking really fast and I don't know why. Colors. So colors tonight, tea white, of course. Um, what do I have? Artist Flow, just tea white. And then, um, a new brand that I've never tried before and it's cheapy. I got it from Hobby Lobby. It's called Master's Touch Fine Art Studio Acrylic Paint. This is Payne's Gray. 
It mixed up nicely, um, had a nice consistency. So we'll see how it does in comparison to the other brands. I also have one of my favorites, Amsterdam. This is, uh, what color is this? Uh, well, ultramarine violet. Isn't this the color of the year? I believe that's the color of the year. Uh, what else? Windsor Newton, the pale violet. Yeah, if I can grab it. The Academy, you can tell I'm almost out of it. The Dioxane Purple. And then, for that big, bright splash of color, Golden Teal, or as I like to call it, what the French call it, Oh, I put it in my basket already. Hold on, because I gotta tell you the name. Because the French, you know, their words are always better than English, in my opinion. They call it the Blue Lagoon, so I always like that name better than just teal. The Blue Lagoon. Um, I started my four cups, I added the white, I added the Diox Purple, and a little bit of the Pale Violet. And this time, as I'm mixing my colors, Instead of layering them so much, I'm layering a little bit, but I'm also holding it up higher and letting the color dip into the white a little bit. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this because I can't do it with, I need a third hand. But I'm holding it up, pouring it, letting it go into the other colors, and then adding a layer on top. So tonight, I just don't wanna layer so it's more of a dirty pour. Boy, they're having a good time downstairs. Uh, more of a dirty pour into the cups with a little bit of layering. I apologize for the noise level, but I don't have the uh, heart to go tell them to hush when they're having such a good time. So, we got the purple, and then, I mean, I'm sorry, the blue lagoon or teal. Add some purple. I'm gonna dip down in there, so a little splash, and then layer. So tonight is splash and layer. And then a little bit of my Payne's Gray. A little pour, a little layer. Again, because uh, like last time, it's so thin, it's kind of tough to layer. It doesn't sit on top of each other and play as nice as it does when it's thicker. And they're coming along nicely. I'm gonna put in a layer of white on top. And this I am gonna try and layer. So that white will sink so fast. It occurred to me, I never explained to anybody why uh, I call myself waterfall acrylics um, because it sounds like it's a, a company or something, and it's just little old me, nobody else. But I didn't really like anything with my own name. And every time I did a pour with a bunch of colors, it just reminded me of a waterfall. And so then I Googled it, and there was nothing out there called waterfall acrylics at all, anything. I was like, oh, it's available, it's free. Uh, and so that's how I came up with the name. Not a very exciting story at all. Um, but there you have it. I just like the name. Um, let me see. We're going to go back to the Diox Purple again. And I'll tell you a couple hints in a minute, as I like to do, until I run out of hints. Then I'll have to go in repeat mode. Um, let me see. I might have mentioned this before, is uh, if I have leftover paint in the cups, I hate to waste paint, right? We all do. I usually make um, coasters out of them, so I was gonna show you a couple coasters that I just finished. Uh, they look like this. So I just do mini pours over coasters and then I resin them. Well, first, before I resin them, you clean them really well. Um, and then I put a barrier coat, usually the mini wax polyacrylic. Let that dry for a day or two. 
and then I resin them, um, let that cure, and then on the back, I like to use stiff felt, um, and I just use a paper cutter and cut them into squares, and I leave like a, an eighth of an inch. These are like almost four and a quarter, so I do four and an eighth. I don't like it to go to the edge because when the coaster is sitting, you can, I don't like to be able to see the felt. But just something fun to do. They're a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. Those who uh, make coasters and try to sell them and have sets and sets, man, more power to you because that's a lot of work. Um, they're fun and I do them just because I don't like to waste paint. And I'm incredibly lazy. I have all kinds of sample jars to save my paint in and I never do. I'd rather use it that night and be done with it. So, these four cups are filling up full. I'm kind of worried there's not enough paint, but we'll see. Tonight's PM recipe is nothing new. I'm not experimenting, only because I had a full bottle available for this painting. So this is um, leftover pouring medium from my last pour in here, and I had nearly a full bottle. So this was 50%, uh, or I made two cups. So a cup of Floetrol, a cup of Elmer's Blue All, or whatever PVA you can get your hands on, and six ounces of varnish. No water, no other pouring medium. So I'm using the same thing tonight. Um, where'd I leave off? The yellow. Back to my teal. Oh my gosh. So pretty. I hope this color combination is okay. I'm gonna put a lot in. Just cause I like the color. If I was super organized, I would grab a couple smaller canvases and do an experiment that my friend suggested. She got me thinking about the whole adding silicone and running out, and that's why I had two cups that were um, had less cells than their uh, counterparts. So I'll just if I killed off. Let me just go ahead and kill off the teal in this last cup. The other thing I should be doing that I'm too lazy to do is when I'm doing a big canvas, I normally use um, a plastic drop cloth, something like this or like a buck fifty at uh, a hardware store. And I like it because you can cut it to size and I put it over my kitchen island. Um, tonight, um, I noticed that my newspaper I have down are comics so I was standing here earlier eating my gummy bears, reading the comments, which I haven't done in years. And I don't know why I get the paper every Sunday. Um, and it reminded me of last Halloween, uh, my daughter who's 12, so she was 11 then, you know, winding down on the whole Halloween trick or treating bit. Um, we took her out and we took her to, uh, a nature center where they had candy and a party and you went on a spooky nature walk and they had all kinds of uh, movie characters and things along the way that the kids could talk to. And we got to one section and they had like the Great Pumpkin Patch and Charlie Brown and not only did my daughter not know who that was but most of the kids and it really bummed me out. I'm like, they don't know what peanuts is I'm like oh my god how can that be no idea just shows you the times are changing <clears throat> there's nothing worse uh than giving uh telling a story and you make a social reference to something like peanuts and your audience just stares at you like what are you talking about and they have no idea isn't that sad it bums me out that's what it was like so i was looking at this like oh no more peanuts. Or when I make that wah, 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 sound like the teacher does in the old cartoons, 
or um, you know when they had the little peanuts uh, show on TV? My daughter's like, why are you making that weird noise? I'm like, oh man, that's a sad. I'm messing, messing up my hands tonight. Um, cup's looking pretty full. That went really quick tonight. Just let me top those off with some white. And we're just gonna randomly dump these on the canvas. Well, I'm not gonna do it in order. My little line, like, like I like so much. And we're really gonna swirl it around on the canvas. And I promised myself that even if this painting comes out like you know what, um, if it doesn't turn out as aesthetically pleasing as I like, let's just say, I'm gonna post this video anyway. So please, God, please, painting powers that be, let this turn out nice. Because I'm kind of in love with this color combination. So we shall see. You also notice I have the sides of this um, cradle board uh, taped up. Um, if this piece does turn out nicely, I intend to resin it. So that's why it's taped. Um, the paint can run over the sides, that's fine, but I'm not gonna, uh, um, I'm gonna peel the tape and leave those clean because there's a nice natural looking wood underneath that I wanna preserve. So um, the bottoms and the sides are taped. Um, I'd give you guys a gummy bear if I could. They're really, really good and put on some gloves and let's get to it. All right. I move my paints to the side so I don't knock anything over. camera jiggles, that's me throwing paint into my cart. All right, don't need the silicone anymore. I have a little tiny bit of paint left in a couple of the couple colors. I'm gonna do with something after. Out of white, out of teal, out of violet. I might not be able to, only have paints gray and then the dioxane uh, purple left. All right, so let's just, let's just do these one at a time and splooge them about. Just random spot, throw it on there, give it a second, it's pretty liquid and I'm just gonna do that. Be messy. Two, whoa, <laughs> well that's really pretty on my comics. I don't have to worry about that corner at all. Two, three, oh, again. I'm not good at, last time I was bragging about my flip cupping abilities. Not tonight. Three, there's a bunch there, throw it on the corner. And four. Four, I think I'll go that way. Or maybe this way, I don't know. Here, I'm just gonna do that. So obviously I got a big old corner up here that needs a lot more paint. So that's where we'll tilt first. I'll let it run a second. The problem with hardwood is I can't stick my hand underneath and give it a little help like I could with the, uh, the canvas. But we'll let it, they're joining up here in the middle. They missed each other. Like, oh, reunited, feels so good. Pretty cool looking so far though. We'll see after I'm done. Let me move cups out of the way. Oh, there's a bunch of bunch of paint left here. Hold on a second. Let me dump that on there. And dump. since I don't have to worry about the sides or corners since it's taped, it's nice that I can just throw all the empty paint up up top or wherever I want. I feel like this is uh, moving very fast and dirty tonight. So. 
so. Oh, one more. Where are we gonna put him? I'll put him down here. Kill him off. All right. You'll notice when I lift up too, the um, my board is sitting on three of the um, glass jars that I like, measuring cups that I like to uh, use to mix paint in. And I can only find three and not the fourth. So luckily it's not still pretty level. So I'll go toward you guys for a second. And then back toward me. I'm going pretty fast. And then back toward me. Bear with me a second. I'm gonna get this one piece down here. It sold up more than I thought it would. I'm gonna go more just to get the uh, colors through the middle. So I'm gonna stop a second and just t check out my composition. See what I like, what I don't like. Again, you know me, I don't torch until the very end. Um, my favorite purple spoon is in the dishwasher, but I don't need it. It's too bad that I'm not doing the sides because the sides are looking pretty amazing. Uh, I like the middle section. I love this. I don't like when you do this this style and you're rotating the canvas all around where it it shows you where you tilted like the swoosh going in this direction is from me turning it that direction so i got this whole swoosh here and one here now i can play with it and see what happens at the risk of losing the rest of my composition I'm not sure how I feel about this much teal in this spot. Um, I might come back a little bit toward me. Or I could torch it and see what's underneath. Um, I feel like there's a fair amount of paint still on the board. Um, and I like it to be a little thinner. So I'm going to tilt toward me for just a second. Not a lot. And hopefully it'll sort out this bit right here. And it kind of goes slow. I'm sorry if you guys can't see this bit. Just a little bit more. Come on off some of the teal and come back. And actually that did help in that it, let me come back toward you a little bit. It opened up this area here much nicer. still have that weird swoosh there, but I guess I'm going to have to live with that. Um, so let me get rid of my gloves and grab my torch. This, this style of tilting with thin paint too, um, you're at the mercy of what the cells do um, that form by themselves because it's it's hard to um, keep them nice and round and oval um, because of all the tilting that's why I recommend if you do this type wait till the end to torch if you want more cells this is pretty busy now there are parts here that I'll zoom in later that are this part here in particular is amazing so I'm just gonna go very selectively and uh, I'm gonna stop a lot and just stare at the composition. So I apologize in advance. Actually, bear with me a second. Wrong way. Duh. I 
did that because the colors mixed on this one corner and I think between the purple and the Payne's gray, it's a lovely shade of blue gray that looks, it gives depth to the, the bright purple underneath and I was hoping to get a little more of that. I have a little touch of it over here, but um, that's my favorite thing of this painting right now is that one corner. So I'm not gonna torch that, I'm gonna leave it. As tempting as it is to take that blank little space and shh, don't. Leave it be. Let's try right here in this purple area. I'm gonna go up high for a second. Get some bubbles, cause look, even up high, I just got a million little cells in there. Ah, uh, gosh, hope you can see that. I'll zoom in on it. So this thing is gonna sew up really fast. I'm gonna keep my torch high and be super careful. Or you know what, that's for giggles. Let's go low and just zap an area and see what happens. Like maybe right here, that, which I knew was gonna happen. So it's gonna have a whole cluster there. They're not gonna grow very big. They're just gonna be little little baby cells. Um, and luckily that was a good spot. So it can be kind of busy there. But if I were to just randomly start torching all over, I would lose my composition and I would just have masses of cells, which if that's what you like, um, awesome. Um, I don't know why I don't. I think that's just a personal preference. So, hey, if you like that, please, by all means, don't listen to me. What do I know? Do what you want. Uh, let's see. Try to do a little bit in this, this teal section right here. Get low. Whoa. So that just brought up all kinds of purple underneath of it, which uh, I know you guys can't tell from there, but I'll zoom in on. Uh, a little bit right here, whoa. That's pretty cool. It's over there. Add a little to that. I say if you're worried about where you're gonna have your cells, be a chicken like me and just do the edges because that's what I do, because I'm a chicken. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit something here just to break up the way that stripe went. And again, just like last time, I don't know why that bothers me, who knows? It just does, so I'm just gonna give it a zap. Add a whole bunch of teal cells right in there and there is a ton of bubbles that I can see. So I'm gonna try and go up high, just really high, and just hopefully get enough heat to pop bubbles without creating any more cells. Well, that helps. I'm gonna put some right there. Maybe some more right in there. I think I'm done. That was a fast one. Or it seemed fast to me. And I'm telling you, it's just sugar high from the gummy bears. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention while I stare at this for another minute, see if I want to do anything else, is uh, your surface. I don't know what everyone paints on. Those of you that sit down on the floor and paint, God bless you, I cannot do that. My knees kill me. Um, I am grateful every day that my kitchen island is bar height so I don't have to hunch over. Um, if you guys are painting in your kitchen uh, and you're painting on granite the way I am or marble or any of those uh, types of surfaces, just make sure it's sealed properly. Buy yourself a spray bottle and seal your countertop. And then once you do, you are good for a couple months. And it doesn't matter what the heck I do to the granite, it's impervious. It is completely impervious. impervious. I have taken my little tool right here and 
been able to just pop up um, drops of silicon, which um, I, or not silicon, um, resin, which when I resin, I tend to put down parchment paper all over the place because that's parchment page paper is just a miracle when you're dealing with resin. Um, but just, you know, not necessarily painting related, but I don't want anyone um, to see a video of mine, like, look at her painting on your granite. I guess it's safe. My granite has been polished and protected uh, quite well, so I don't have to worry about spills and drips and things. So, um, it's looking a little bit busy to me now that the cells have grown. I mean, there's a ton of cells, which I know a lot of you love. For me, it's a bit much. Remember my spot that I wanted to keep that was like midnight blue? Look at it. It's all sewed up, and I didn't even touch it. It just poof. Um, I might come back again. There's still this um, really sharp blob right here. So let me eat a gummy bear and throw in some gums. And I'm just going to pour that little section off a little bit and call it done. And I know, I know if I was watching this right now, I'd be yelling at the YouTube video saying, don't do it, don't touch it. Don't you hate it, you're watching somebody and they over it and you're like, stop it, oh my God. So feel free to yell at me right now. I might stop myself if I don't like what it does to the rest of the painting. But that's, it's so prominent right here. Um, I think it throws the balance of the whole painting off just a little bit. So let me see what happens. Nope, not doing it. I'll tell you why. The second I start to do it, it's one of the, the downfalls of cradle wood is that it's gonna pull in the middle. And as soon as I start to tilt toward me, I'm gonna lose this section right here. It immediately started clumping up and like, oh, okay. If the teal goes, we go. It's like they're in a union together or something. Like if the teal goes, we go. You're not moving. I'm like, aye, aye, Captain. All right, I can see. Give you a raise, whatever. Another terrible pun. I apologize. So actually, I'm just going to tilt it back the way it was. Right about there. Just so we have that nice little centerpiece in the middle. And, as I always like to say, ta-da! Let me see if I can uh, zoom in close so you guys can see it. And as usual, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and the nice comments lately. You guys are the best. One sec. Don't touch a button. Oh. All right. Coming down here. <clears throat> Let me do this. Let me turn out my overhead light. Maybe I won't have that glare. Oh, wrong light. See if that helps any. Does that help? Maybe I'll turn off both lights. Oh, can you still see it? Nope. Hmm. Maybe it's an experiment in light of lighting. Let's just try the overhead. Oh, that's better. So let me go up here so you guys can see. And I'll move it around. And you can see where I tore torch and how much it uh it really sewed up and got kind of busy still pretty though and then over here i'm glad i didn't torch everywhere it would be incredibly busy i love this little segment right here in the middle and then over here is where i had my little deep space area that that sewed up all by itself and then there's the teal area, which isn't so bad now that I'm standing on the other side of the canvas. So I will post pictures in the video on the advanced pouring page on Facebook so you can get a better look at it. Where am I? And there I am. Hi. You guys have a great night. Take care.